Yesterday we were talking about how the plates moved from the past to now, like Pangea and how it went to now and what stayed the same and what's different. Great. What did An overarching goal for this lesson was to get kids to use data to draw conclusions, to make predictions. You need to know um, what land is on what plate and what, oce what ocean is on what plate, so if they move, you know what's going to move and what's not going to move. Great, and I'm actually glad you reminded us of that. We gotta remember that continents are attached to these plates, these sort of chunks of crust. Um, and you have both continental crust, which is what you were talking about, and also oceanic crust. Pam? I uh, think we would also need to know at the rate of how fast the plates are moving under the continents so we could predict exactly where, if we don't know where it's gonna go, we're at least gonna know how fast it's gonna go there. Because if they're moving really slowly, that might, call for a different prediction than if they're moving really quickly. Anything else that might be useful? Yeah, um, the direction they're moving in and uh, like where you think they're gonna go. Good for you. Can someone please remind me what word we learned back in physics that describes both speed and direction? Rob? Velocity. Velocity. Uh, so if we knew the velocity of these plates, the speed and the direction in which they were moving, we might be able to predict. I was also trying to get them to start to think about how might these changes on Earth impact the organisms that we see living on Earth. And so there were sort of several, several layers in there, um, but the overall being this idea that the Earth is very dynamic. Who has heard of GPS? Alex? This thing on my cell phone is called GPS, and usually plug in where the person is and it just searches the map for them. Great, so map, so it helps you with location? Correct. Maybe? Okay. Do you want to add to that, Thomas? Uh, yeah, it's a global positioning system, and you use a satellite to find out where you are and yeah. what latitude and longitude you are, and you can see a map of where you are around you. You're absolutely right. There are these satellites orbiting Earth about 11,000 miles above the surface of the Earth. What I did was use the overhead that had some examples of these land features that I especially wanted them to think about in their predictions. What else is shown in this picture? Nick? Mid-ocean ridges. Mid-ocean ridges. And Nick, what's, what's going on here with the plates? Uh, they're separating apart from each other. They're separating. Do you remember what kind of boundary that is? Uh, diverging. Divergent, good. So your job today is going to be to take a map which represents about 3,000 worldwide observation, GPS observations. And what they've done is they've put on them uh, what we call velocity vectors. What do you think a velocity vector would indicate, actually? Thomas? Um, the velocity of the plate, like what direction it's going in and how fast it's going. Is there someone up close that can tell us sort of how the arrows vary? Some are small, some are big. Any ideas about what the short versus the long might tell you? Winston? Oh, I think the shorter ones, they're, uh, they go slower and the long ones go faster. Absolutely, absolutely. So take a look at your map in your upper left-hand corner. What is that telling you? Tori? How fast the continents are moving per year. Yes, that's your marker for about five centimeters each year. And so you can match that up to your arrows. Okay? You're gonna get a map. Each table will get a map that looks like this. And each table will get a set of continents. Your job is going to be to again consider what you already noticed in the velocity vectors map. So they were taking this data that they had never seen before. And then the students were asked to use that data to make predictions. I think this plate's going to go down a little bit because of the arrows. And the South American plate is going to go kind of chase um, Africa's plate. And Africa's going to just move along with Eurasia. Since these two plates are moving away from each other, some islands might form here because of a mid-ocean ridge would form in between them. So. Okay. These mountains are when India's plate is gonna crash into Eurasia's plate. It already did and created the Himalayas, but it might make them taller or create some new ones. And then this is the Arabian plate crashing into the Eurasian plate. Okay, two key questions that we need to know about your work. One, what are we looking at? So point out some of the key, both positions of the continents and features. And then tell us a little bit about how you got there. So how did you make the decisions uh, that you made? 
I didn't want it to just be a repeat of something that we had done last year that, you know, I, I want, wanted to review, I wanted to circle back, but I wanted to push deeper. We figured that a chain of islands might appear there. We also think there's going to be mountain ranges on where Europe and Africa meet and Australia and the end of Asia meet. And Australia also goes up this way. And when it comes around over here, then it hits North America and gets caught on with the Asia and North America. South America is um, moving toward Africa, and Africa is moving toward... One of the things that did, both looking at the data and then moving into their predictions, was thinking about the planet on a more sort of global scale. The air will get a lot colder than it is now, so probably be snow along here, along here, and all around Antarctica. Oh, so you're so the the actual climate of North America will change because it's moving. It as yeah. a continent is moving closer to the North Pole. Mm -hmm. Does that capture it? Okay, thank you.